live from case at 12 the night beat starts right now family wants to express their profound sadness that we came to this day and um, you know we're hoping that no other family has to suffer the way they suffer a family continues to grieve after former San Antonio police officers are indicted in the shooting death of a woman who was suffering a mental health episode. Two of those San Antonio police officers charged with murder today, a grand jury indicting two of those three officers accused of killing Melissa Perez inside her home this past June. The night team's Patty Santos has new information tonight from the family's attorney, and he says that other officers that were on the scene that night should also be held accountable for not doing enough to stop the shooting. Lady, get over here. This body cam video shows a woman running from uniformed San Antonio police officers, then barricading herself inside her apartment. She was holding a hammer. Melissa Perez was having a mental health crisis. It was June 23rd around midnight. Two hours later, she was dead. Three officers shot her through the window. It's not very common that you have a gang of 15 officers around a mentally ill woman's house who's posing no threat to anyone, and three of them opened fire on her. Dan Packard is the attorney for Melissa Perez's family. He's seen the unedited body cam video. Multiple officers who were on the scene had had prior dealings with Melissa Perez, and they knew she was schizophrenic. Today, Perez's family was told about the official indictment. Former officers Alfred Flores and LSR Alejandro will face first-degree murder charges. Nathaniel Villalobos was indicted with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Packard explains why. There were only two bullets that struck the body, and so the one that uh, discharged his weapon multiple times but did not actually strike Ms. Perez was appropriately charged with um, assault with an aggravated assault. San Antonio police fired the officers. Records show Alejandro and Flores had multiple suspensions in the past five years. After the shooting, the police chief William McManus said, quote, they did not follow department policy or training. Packard says Perez's toxicology report shows she didn't have any drugs in her system. The city can't really heal until the city takes responsibility for its role. Packard also says police could have handled things differently. They had a loaded shotgun with beanbags available. He also thinks the other officers on the scene who did not try to stop things from escalating prove they don't have enough mental health training. Why didn't a supervisor say, hey, stand down? What are we doing here? She's not going to hurt anybody. No one is above the law. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez agrees the overriding theme is more education about mental illness. We can um, focus on better training for our law enforcement community. If convicted for murder, the officers could face life in prison. Patty Santos, Case at 12 News. It knew on the night beat she was charged with murder and now she's been indicted by a grand jury. This is 23 year old Casey Garcia. She was arrested back in May in connection to the shooting death of Vanessa Martinez. It all happened outside of a gas station near Northwest Loop 410 and Highway 151. Police are calling the incident a road rage shooting. Now we want you to take a look at this. KSAT cameras captured the moment that the woman accused of stealing $100 million from the U.S. Army was leaving the federal courthouse. The woman that you're looking at, or you're about to get a clearer picture of her, is 57-year-old Janet Mello. This was her first court appearance after being charged with mail fraud and aggravated identity theft. Feds say that she took money that was supposed to go to military members and their families and instead used that money to buy clothes, jewelry, cars, homes, and she allegedly did it while managing a financial program at Fort Sam Houston. If she's convicted, Mello would face jail time and also be forced to turn over whatever she got as a result of the alleged crime. All right, are we ready for the winner or not? CPS Energy says yes. ERCOT not quite going that far. ERCOT, which operates the statewide grid, estimates there's up to a 17% chance it will order rolling outages next month. However, ERCOT says that's if we get a severe winter storm event happening during the day and at a time when the most people are using energy at the same time. So we went to CPS Energy's CEO. He says all he can do is focus on what he can control. I think all operators across the state of Texas have heard loud and clear that, you know, we've got a, a job to do to ensure reliability and, and, and all we can do here in San Antonio is, is ensure our plants are ready. 
Yeah, he says if we deal with rolling outages, CPS Energy hopes and plans on them being more manageable than what we did and had during the 2021 February freeze. Some changes coming to Bernie Lake. The city council there voting this week to ban alcohol at the lake. That decision comes as the city's parks and rec director cited going for a more family friendly atmosphere at Bernie Lake. Violating the new city ordinance could cost you a fine of up to $200. Read more about it right now on KSAT.com. All right, switching gears. This is a really cool story. A local teacher is getting national recognition tonight. Yeah, Dashiell Young Saver named a Forbes esteemed 30 under 30 list for 2024. A list that includes names like Kendall Jenner and Lamar Jackson. Now the night team's John Paul Baraja sat down with the AP statistics teacher from the Idea School on South Flores. And you're about to see why he made the list. You're about to see his lesson plan. Three standard deviations away from the mean. We're at 99.7. Math isn't for everyone, but in the Shell Young Savers High School classes, we only oh that's that's the number. That's correct. Just about everyone is engaged. <laughs> Perfect. We're there. And his creative lesson plans. What's going to be the center of our normal? Found him a spot on Forbes 30 under 30 for 2024. It was kind of a shock. Um, there wasn't a lot of lead up to it, um, and um, but very thankful to them for recognizing the work. Oh yeah, yeah. Young Saver traded boring textbook math problems. Bob is 58 watermelons. 1-6. 6 roughly. For ones that had relevance to his students, he says students asked to learn about a wide variety of topics, such as... What's your probability of finding a true match on an online dating site? The odds of having a fairy tale ending hooked some, but for others, the love of the Spurs was more pressing. Is it three-point shooting percentage? How do you weight all these factors and see how one team is doing relative to the average? and? what that does to their predicted probability of winning a finals. And then in a district where traditionally only 2% of students pass the AP stats exam, went up to 42% passing in his classroom. It doesn't take a calculator to see making math relatable, <laughs> put the odds in Young Saver's favor. Learning the math becomes not a chore, but an opportunity. Young Saver's success and remote learning because of the pandemic led him to put his relevant math online and creating his nonprofit, Skew the Script, a free curriculum provider, which currently has upwards of 20,000 teachers subscribed to it across the nation. Still, Young Saver says the work's not done. Our eventual goal is to make all of secondary math 6 through 12 relevant. And it's going to be a multi-year process, but we're excited to get going on it. I to... <gasps> For me? John Paul Barajas, KSAT what? 12 News. Thank you. OK, I'm pretty sure that we're going to hear from Young Saver again at some point. He's going to make national headlines again. He's I, I love what he's doing. He says that he's honored for this recognition, but he also wants to thank his students because they took his lessons and then they did the work to understand it. And they also made good grades. I wish he was my math teacher, right? No offense. This is all good. But speaking of teacher recognition, you might be thinking about giving your child's teacher a gift this holiday season. Well, if you don't know what to get, teachers with Teach for America recommend these few items. Gift cards, coffee mugs, chapstick, lotion, anything from the heart or anything related to school supplies that teachers can use in the classroom to help kids learn. Can I ask you about your recent health inspection? It was a failing score and it's the second one in a row. Our Tim Gerber drops by a local restaurant that's failed its health inspection twice in the span of two months. What workers said about their poor performance behind the kitchen door. And the latest data just came in. I'm a little more optimistic about our rainfall potential tomorrow. We'll have the latest future cast talk about how much we can see and where and dive into the weekend in just a bit. And talk about the season for giving. Do we have a story for you just in time for the holidays? Two local waitresses given a well-deserved surprise. You don't want to miss the moment they were told. A Mexican restaurant failed its health inspection last month, and that was the second time in as many months. Yeah, the night team's Dim Gerber stopped by this week to ask questions about their problems behind the kitchen door. Guerrero 
Carlos Mexican restaurant located in the 3700 block of Nogalito Street failed their November inspection with a low score of 60. This after failing another inspection back in September. They got a 64 on that one. This time around, they racked up 21 health code violations. They were improperly cooling foods. The inside of the ice machine needed to be cleaned and sanitized to remove a buildup and the dishwashing machine wasn't sanitizing the dishes. A worker was cutting onions with bare hands. Another employee dropped a thermometer on the floor, picked it up, wiped it off with a paper towel, and was about to use it on some food before the inspector stepped in and stopped them. I stopped by this week to see why they failed two inspections in a row, but was told there was no manager available to speak to me at that time. I also noticed the business hadn't posted the inspection report which they were also cited for. Tienda Centro America, located in the 3900 block of San Pedro, earned a 76 on their inspection last month. They were selling food that was improperly labeled. Knives were stored with food debris on them. They were told to check for pest activity and they were storing food in non-food grade containers, including plastic shoe boxes and t-shirt bags. The business also had its license suspended due to a clogged grease trap. They were told to clear the drain and do a deep cleaning to remove sewage debris. I dropped by this week to see just how long they were shut down. A manager refused to go on camera but said they were only closed about an hour. A reinspection was required to reopen. Mary Chula Mexican Food, located in the 5000 block of West Commerce, earned a 76 on their recent inspection. They had to throw out raw meat that was being kept in a cold unit that was too warm. They also tossed out black moldy produce that had a foul stench. The dishwasher wasn't cleaning dishes properly. The business also cited for using unapproved chemicals for pest control, including a tracking powder that they were instructed should never be used in the kitchen. Meanwhile, a few roaches were also found there in the kitchen. The business was in need of a thorough cleaning. They were also told to not feed the birds in the back of the business and to not allow miners in the kitchen when the business is open. A reinspection was ordered. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. From BKD to an OMG now, it's an absolutely heartwarming moment caught on video. That's Crystal and Ashley. They are two waitresses at Cracker Barrel over on Southeast Military Drive. Both of these two are single mothers. And both were the surprise recipients of the fourth annual holiday giving event. It's really a holiday tradition driven by the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association and also local real estate agents. I want to show you the moment that Crystal and Ashley were given the news. Take a look. And we know that Christmas is tough. And from us to you, I'm presenting you $3,000. And this is a Merry Christmas to you guys. $1,500 each. Crystal also received a brand new bicycle for her 10 year old. And if you want to know what giving this holiday season is all about. That's it. Just look at look at this. That's it. Yeah. Wow. I would love more time to speak with those ladies, but that, but that's just so nice. And it's true. That's what the holiday season is about. I love that they also got a bike. Yeah. For one of her kids. Well, the best part is these the group that puts this all together, they do it every year. Uh -huh. They always go and pick out waitresses that they get referred to that could really use some help in the holiday season. And then they surprise them in this way. They get a big table. They have these two serve them or one waitress serve them depends on the year. And then they surprise them with the money and they deserve them. I mean, that's hard that's work. Right. Have you ever waited tables? No. I did bag groceries back in the day. Okay. But All right. No, I did. I, didn't, I, didn't I did. Tables. It was, really? it's a lot. Yeah. Dealing with, what do you mean, really? No, I just, I'm not surprised. <laughs> like you're doubting I mean, me. <laughs> you're such a giver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Steve. We'll, we'll resort to the guy over here who drove the picker at the driving range oh. and worked at the uh, grill area, flipping burgers and making a few other things nice. and serving hot dogs at the so golf we have course. So we have a waitress, a bagger, and the guy that picked up golf balls. Yeah, it, I we like have, it. We always had so much fun just making that beeline straight in and watching everybody scramble to get their balls ready to try to hit you. <laughs>
It's always good fun. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> ching, ching. And it echoed in there. Oh, man, it was loud when it hit. All right, now let's get right to our weather here and notice the rain chances tomorrow at 40% for a good chunk of the day. And that's just for the actual real showers that move through and even a few non severe storms. I do think the drizzle and sprinkles will be about 80%. But then tomorrow evening for any Christmas or holiday parties or outdoor events or anything you have planned. It'll all be coming to an end. It's all out of here by tomorrow evening, shortly after sunset. Nothing on the radar at the moment. We had a few uh, very light showers and sprinkles earlier. The bulk of the rain again in the panhandle and even stretching now northward through Oklahoma on into Kansas and stretching up into Nebraska as well. This is where the heart of the precipitation has been. They've already seen in excess of two inches in some of these areas and they're going to add to it even more. This is part of this big dip in the upper level flow, that big trough, good energy out ahead of it and a weak cold front associated with it. That's going to swing through tomorrow. Don't expect big changes from the cold front and more of a wind shift than anything. It helps cl clear us out and scour out the sky for the weekend. Latest future cast low clouds, some drizzle, some sprinkles for the morning commute, so expect a damp and soggy start to the day. And then once we get late morning, midday, closer to noon, a few non severe thunderstorms should start popping up and we should see some pockets of more moderate to even heavy rain for brief periods of time. Some sprinkles scattered about elsewhere and then notice after sunset, it's all east of here. I mean, by tomorrow evening at this time, it's all closer to Houston and out of the case at 12 viewing area. Rainfall potential is looking a little bit better than before uh, just because we have a slightly higher probability of seeing a few more of those those downpours. Still, we're looking at about a quarter of an inch in and around our area. But keep in mind where we do happen to see some of those downpours pop up, you could get a quick half inch of rain uh, in a jiffy, probably within 30 to 60 minutes. Still, though, most of the rain is going to be falling in North Texas and East Texas from this. But hey, they could use it, too. Quick look at temperatures 51 earlier today in the morning, 61 for the high temperature right now. Well, 62, I guess that's our current temperature. That should be the high dew point of 56. The temperature and dew point are going to get close to each other, and that's going to help saturate that air tonight. So tomorrow morning, we start the day at 55. By noon, we're at 59, 64 the high temperature. The light rain drizzle and sprinkles in the morning, then some non severe thunderstorms popping up here and there for the midday and on into the afternoon as well. After sunset, it really starts to push out of here and the wind out of the east turning northerly behind that weak cold front at 5 to 10. Some lower 60s in the hill country tomorrow. Comfort 62, Kerrville 60, mid 60s elsewhere. Now this weekend's looking beautiful. Like I said, that cloud, that cold front's going to scour out the cloud cover, get rid of it. Sunny weekend, a bit breezy and windy on Saturday. You'll notice that for a good portion of the day, but mid to upper 60s for highs. So pleasant, you know, low humidity, great conditions. Bit of a chill in the, in the air by Sunday morning at 39. Next week, we're talking highs near 70, so a little above average. Morning still above freezing and dry until maybe next Friday to the following weekend gives us a little hope. Hey, did you see the asparatus clouds earlier today? We have a great article on ksat.com slash weather regarding these clouds. Thank you, Adam. By the way, I want to give a shout out to my friend Thor Tripp that <coughs> sent us that video of the waitresses at the Cracker Barrel getting the checks. So yeah, thank you that for was that. Great. We love stories like His that. name is Thor. That's awesome. Okay. That's a great name, isn't it? That's awesome. He did sports in Omaha. Very cool. And speaking of Thor, the Cowboys getting ready to put the hammer down this weekend. They need to put the hammer down like this weekend. That. Yeah, that's for sure, because the Cowboys have momentum. They're going to play at the Bills a road game, and the boys have struggled on the road this season. And check it out, Wimby Claus and Julian the Elf passing out some holiday cheer. You got to love this coming up. play hard, play fast, so, uh, and it's all led by him, and, uh, you know, he showed why he's, you know, number one pick and leading candidate for rookie of the year tonight. Yeah, Anthony Davis is impressed with Wimby after facing him last night in big board sports. 
Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Winners of five in a row, the Dallas Cowboys will take their show on the road at the Buffalo Bills Sunday afternoon. The forecast there is calling for temperatures in the 40s with a chance of rain. And because of that, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott says they did some wet ball drills today at practice. After beating the Eagles 33-13 on Sunday, Dak and the boys want to keep the momentum going on the road where Dallas is just 3-3 three and three this season. Obviously going into a place with a uh, hectic environment, great atmosphere, great fans out here. Um, yeah, looking forward to the challenge, but uh, right now it's not about home or, to, or home or away. These are all playoff type games, as I spoke, to, spoke about before, and so it's important for us just to use this momentum confidence that we've gathered from the last month and a half, I guess you can say, and uh, make sure we take another step on the road. Houston Texans starting quarterback C.J. Stroud is still in concussion protocol after the back of his head slammed very hard on the turf Sunday at the New York Jets. He hasn't practiced yet this week. If he can't go Sunday at Tennessee, then Davis Mills will get the start against the team he's had success against. I think experience helps everyone. When you step in, like if you've been there, you've done it, and you're not making a moment bigger than it should be, experience helps us all. So you would like to think that that experience would definitely help out. The Titans are going to wear, check it out, their throwback Oilers uniform Sunday when they host the Texans at noon. All right, so the Spurs battled back from a 20-point hole last night before losing to the Lakers 122 to 119. They outscored LA in the fourth 45 to 30. Mary Rominger was there and she has more. Hey Larry, the Spurs 3 and 20 record doesn't look good on paper, but in a night where odds were stacked against them, San Antonio showed grit where they haven't before in the fourth quarter. We took care of the ball at least a little bit, not like in the first half and uh, we, we tried to, to step up the, intent, the intensity as well. I think we surprised them a couple times. The treat for basketball fans was born in the matchup between rookie Victor Wembanyama and superstar Anthony Davis. The two exchanged punches throughout the game and Wembanyama never let up, scoring on and rejecting Davis on multiple occasions as Wemby walked away with 30 points, 13 boards and six blocks. It's a great experience, you know. Um, some, some, he's somebody I've, I've studied uh, a little bit in the past and a uh, great player, of course. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be able to play so much more times against him. Friday's rematch will be a good one, and hopefully the Silver and Black gain some confidence going toe to toe with a talented and experienced Lakers squad. Back to you, Larry. Thanks, Mary. So the Spurs will host the Lakers tomorrow night, 630 at the Frost Bank Center. And the Spurs today announced that they signed guard David Duke Jr. to a two-way contract. And in a corresponding roster move, they waived two-wave guard Sir Jabari Rice. Layla again. Layla. You got two on. Huh? You, you've been very good. Very good this year. Victor Claus and Elf Julian were passing out gifts and holiday joy to children and families in need on the west side tonight. The Spurs partner annually with the Elf Louise Christmas Project to provide joy to Bear County's underserved children. So a seven foot four Santa and a six seven elf, definitely a sight to see and delivering holiday smiles at that. We've got the 2025 NCAA Men's Final Four logo after the break. The Arneson River Theater was the place to be this morning to check out the logo for the 2025 Men's Final Four coming to San Antonio April 4th through the 7th in 2025. The University of the Incarnate Word and UTSA will serve as host institutions. Well, I got to see it before today. Um, I love it. I, I think it represents our culture and our city and downtown very well. Um, I can't wait to show it to the rest of the world over the next 474 days until we tip off. This one, I think, is a great representation of the Alamo City and the vibrancy of this incredible community. And I know that that logo will hang in some national champions gym for years and years to come after they win it here in 2025. San Antonio is getting ready to host the final four for the fifth time at the Alamo Dome and San Antonio knows how to host the final four. Yeah, obviously we're, you know, we're experienced. We're not impartial on this <laughs> one, but yeah, I mean, what better place exactly than San Antonio? Yep. Yeah. And we know how to party. Just saying, we'll be right back. <laughs>
You know, we've been talking about our jobs from when we were younger. I yeah. was also a barista before they were a thing at the Minnesota State Fair. I thought it was really? a barista. Barista, whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> I was obviously, a barista. your extensive. I